Well, it's been a while since we've done one of these before. TNA, a pay-per-view. Not really a pay-per-view, actually. If you're if you're not counting the uh, one night only, which I I don't really count those, uh, because I believe their next one is uh, their, their 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 other one is a uh, extravaganza or some kind of thing like that. And it's interesting to me that uh, it, it's it's crazy how they how they have a pay-per-view for a one night only thing, which which is good. You know, one night uh, pay-per-views have been a staple over the of the years. Like ECW had their one night stand, and, and the second one, and the WWE one. The, what I mean WWE one, I mean under the WWE, what I like to call the WWE ECW era, because it wasn't clearly old ECW. It was just Vince's vision to bury it, bury it, bury it, whatever the fuck. And uh, it's interesting that the card for Hardcore Justice is already out. And, um, the matches here actually make sense. The matches here, uh, you know, I haven't watched TNA, but, like, the last time I saw it was actually last night. Probably the best show I've seen in a long time. I love the New York City series as we've had. I mean, we saw Ditsy Carter, I said Ditsy, with a fucking retard of a woman, went through a, ta through a table, there is rumors that she will have queef reconstruction surgery, a queefal Reconstruction surgery. I said that right. A queefal re reconstruction surgery. Try saying that five times fast without botching it. And uh, it's a gr it's a great card. Uh, like last week, like like just last night, we learned about uh, the uh, the uh, J the match with Janice, the X Division title match, and the Six Eyes of Steel coming back. But there's there's a few other matches on here. That, 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 you know, the full card's already been released because TNA has had these shit canned for the past couple uh, months because of the whole, uh, what is it, they're going under apparently because Vince Russo, I that's right, I said Vince Russo worked for TNA, again, as a consultant, and Vince Russo, I, 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 in vintage Russo fashion, accidentally uh, sends an email that's supposed to just go to uh, the announcers because it's an agreement that with Russo that he's just supposed to write for the announcers, uh, Mike Tanay and Taz. And Russo sent it to another person, tried to deny it was fake, and eventually had to come out with the truth that Russo was coming to TNA, which which about which was the worst thing to do because TNA's uh, contract for Impact Wrestling is coming up, and with the past of Spike TV and Russo, it's not going to work. So Russo, because of Russo, TNA has been searching for new uh, networks to go to, like a, like a, maybe a CMT, maybe Spike, Spike may renew, maybe I don't know fucking Sci-Fi. Like I don't think they. I'm trying to think uh, a network that doesn't have wrestling that needs wrestling on it. Uh, I, I mean, hell, this could be a great boom for wrestling right here because TNA dropped the ball, and companies like Ring of Honor could get the Spike TV slot. Companies like uh, Jeff Jarrett's upcoming Global Force Wrestling could get that spot because Jeff Jarrett, he founded TNA, he got the thing for Impact, when it was just Impact, not Impact Wrestling. Um, well, maybe even a Dragon Gate. Maybe even Evolve Wrestling. Maybe even FWE. There's several other promotions I can name. You know, every fucking indie that is, uh, is I mean, even WSU, C God forbid, CZW, but with WSU in the helm, they could have two shows. It's possible. But with Spike TV, you need a wrestling thing to get your ratings. The, barely any of your shows get ratings nowadays. I mean, last uh, last week got a 1.6. I said that right. A 1.6 for Impact. That has never happened before. The highest rating possibly ever, besides pay-per-view, which I doubt, but still. It's amazing to me that TNA can fuck up something so bad that they can lose their thing and we could honestly see another invasion angle where TNA is bought by WWE or some promotion. Hell, put it on the WWE Network. You know, you want Impact? Go to the WWE Network. You know, you, you give them a day to, and Impact is there. It makes sense to me. You know, they're going to buy them out eventually anyway. That's what, that's what Vince McMahon has done, has bought his competition which makes sense to do. 
Uh, but I just want to say one thing uh, for those out of the loop of TNA. Uh, Kurt Angle is the new director of operations because MVP abuses power. Lashley's the new world champion. Uh, and because of the abuse of power, Angle's in charge, which is a great move for TNA. A great move. Uh, the Wolves are, are still tag team champions. Samoa Joe, uh, last week at Destination X, which is weird to having two shows in the next two things in a row, is x Division champion, and Gail Kim is the knockout champ. But, uh, let's just go to this card here, and it'll make more sense as we go along. I'm not even going for the dark match, because apparently they, they, they also put in the, uh, uh, match for Explosion. So in respect for the UK fans, I'm not going to say who wins this match. But I will say it involves Tigre Uno and Crazy Steve. Uh, two, uh, I know Tigre Uno from the AAA promotion as Extreme Tiger. Um, but uh, with, with, with fucking uh, Crazy Steve, I have no idea. I like the guy. I had no idea where he came from. But he's aw fucking awesome. From the Miragene. Forever you say it. The Miragene, I believe. Or something like that. But we go to the matches here. I think this match happened last week, but I'm just going to go through it anyway, just in case it happens again. Uh, Gail Kim versus Velvet Sky versus Angelina Love versus Taryn Terrell. The knockout title, which makes no sense. They just had this match last week. So I'm just going to go with the safe bet if this already happened. If it doesn't happen, um, then Gail Kim will retain, because it makes no sense to have two title matches in a row. So Gail Kim will retain... Something probably with last week, uh, last night with the beautiful people uh, at, you know, going at each other, dissension in the ranks of the beautiful people. Unfortunately, that will happen possibly. Uh, but, but the match I'm excited for, the match I want to see the most out of this fucking card, besides the six sided steel, because the six, for those who don't know, the six sided ring is back in TNA. Thank fucking God that it's back. But uh, uh, with that, we get more more riskiness here, because. We have a stairway to Janice match. I said that right, a stairway to Janice. With Bram and Abyss. Um, so basically, you know, it's the Levin, it's the Levin match. Whoever wins, uh, you can get the, you get the win by retrieving Janice. And I don't know if you can use him in the match. It's a pinball order to that or something like that. But you win by grabbing Janice, pretty much. Uh, depending if they use it, it's up to them. Um, I will, I'm going to go with... Uh, I like Bram. I really like Bram a lot. He came out of nowhere, much like... Uh, Crazy Steve for me. I don't even know who, who Bram was. I thought he was, I thought his name was Rand, but that's like an African uh, currency. Rand, I believe. But uh, Bram, this is going to be a hell of a match. Because uh, Destination X, or, uh, a, week, a week or so ago, they had the greatest fucking Monsters Ball I have ever seen in my life. I had to go, actually to go back and watch it. It was brilliant. Uh, but I'm going to believe Bram wins this match. Bram will win this match, no problem. Uh... But it depends uh, how bad Abyss wants Janice back. Um, exhibition title. Samoa Joe versus Loki. I love the exhibition now. I love TNA for bringing back all the stars like Homicide, Loki, all the other exhibition dudes. It's amazing. I love it. And it's back to what it used to be. The exhibition used to be about no limits. You know, uh, with Bischoff and Hogan, they, they, they made it the cruiserweight belt pretty much. And uh, with, with Joe... It brings a diversity. Joe can can fucking move like a cruiserweight, so it makes sense to have him have the title. Um, but uh, I don't care who wins this, but I'm just gonna go on a limb because Joe just won the title a week ago or two weeks ago, so I'm gonna say uh, Joe wins the belt, uh, retains the belt. I'm sorry. But um, with that, we also have another match, an I Quit match between Mr. Anderson. The feud continues after lockdown. Since lockdown, the feud is still there. Mr. Anderson. Sam Ben Shaw, Samuel Shaw, Samuel Ben Shaw, the Chris Benoit of the modern era. Uh, besides CM Punk, that's another story for another time. But just with his, his character, I, I, I feel Benoit with him. So I'm going to call him Sam Ben Shaw. It's an I Quit match. Um, uh, so basically, you know, people have never seen an I Quit match before. You, you, you say I quit, you lose. It's that simple. And anything goes. So with that... Um, I'm going to say Gunners will be at ringside just because of the whole fucking, uh, the, uh, I don't know if it's a love triangle or what the fuck. Something. But Gunners can be at ringside, but Mr. Anderson will, be, will defeat Sam Benshaw in an I Quit match, no problem. Just like he did at lockdown. And finally, we have the Six Sides of Steel. 
A six-man match where the winner will become the new number one contender of the World Heavyweight Championship. It'll be Bobby Roode versus Gunner versus Eric Young versus Austin Aries versus Magnus versus James. I'm guessing James Storm. Who the, who the fuck is James? I'm gonna I'm just I'm gonna say James Storm is in the match. Um, but, but I am going to I am going to I have a few picks here. I rather I honestly pick anyone in this match, but I am going to say that just just because of how over they are right now. I'm going to say Bobby Roode and Eric Young. I'm not going to say who wins the match. I'm just going to pick both of them as my picks. Because knowing TNA, knowing TNA, they will do a Russo finish, which actually wouldn't be a bad thing, where Roode and Young both escape the cage at the same time, hit the floor simultaneously, much like Undertaker, Batista on SmackDown many moons ago. And you know, there'll be no winner. So we'll have a, we'll have a Jack Tunney coin flip at WrestleMania 10 or something. Or Summer Slip. Bound for Glory 55 or whatever the fuck it is. Winner gets the fucking title shot then. In October. Where they'll probably be out of business. But TNA. Bound for Glory. Not bound for At this point it is Bound for Glory. Because I don't know if they're going to have a pay review. Because their their contract ends in, in September. Close to October. So they could probably do the weekly pay per view thing. Uh, they used to do back in the day in 2002 when they started. I don't know how much money they would get for that. But better than shit can and impacts. And just doing it that way because you won't get your money's worth each time. It's not it's not guaranteed. You have to have a live organic thing. But one more thing before we go. TNA, because of the SmackDown controversy going to Thursdays, like it used to be back in the day, which I loved. I actually start watching it if it did go to Thursdays, so it gave me something to watch. Um, TNA is moving from Thursdays to Wednesdays, so you get your your TNA one day earlier each day of the week. I like this move because it gives TNA diversity with with, with Bellator coming back, with the other shows, MMA shows coming back, uh, like what, like Glory Fight or whatever the fuck it is, kickboxing thing. It's, it's, it's interesting. I like it. It's, it's something I haven't seen in a while. I haven't seen kickboxing in a while, so it's interesting to have that on Spike TV. It's kind of weird, but it's cool. Um, and possible other shows. Much you know, like the Spike TV lineup, you know it's there, you watch it, it's there. Uh, but TNA going to Wednesday is a great move because it gives them diversity, it gives them a, a, an option to re if they redo the contract for Spike TV, or for Spike to redo the contract with Russo gone. Uh, it gives it one day earlier because they're taped on a Monday. I think they're taped on a Monday or the same night of the show. They, have, they, they, they usually tape a second one out of the first show. So it makes sense to do that and just have an extra show just in case. Uh, for Wednesday, that makes sense. You, that, you know, they usually tape on a Monday, so you get your, your TNA two days after it happens instead of three days. So it's great. Uh, but TNA, fucking Destination X, fucking Hardcore Justice, whatever the fuck it is, it's not gonna last long if they don't get a contract because if they don't have a U.S. distributor. They're dead. 